Hello. Um, today I thought it'd be kind of cool to start, sort of start uh, another sort of series of movies. Though uh, it will still probably take just like once a week, like normal. It's not one of those big, like sort of big franchises where it's going to take multiple days in the week to get through. But um, I just kind of had an idea of <clears throat> some things I haven't watched in a while you know re-watching stuff and um one of those uh like films would be uh as the before trilogy um and the first film is uh before sunrise um all these movies are directed by richard linklater who also co-wrote all of them and they star Ethan Hawke and Julie uh, Delpy. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Delpy. Yeah. And basically, these uh, uh, films, you know, it's about uh, their uh, overall uh, relationship, essentially, as. Uh, you know, in this film, um, basically, uh, they're just uh, two people on a train in Vienna uh, who happen to just meet and talk, you know. Uh, uh, plays uh, Celine, uh, Ethan Hawke plays Jesse, and Celine, she goes and moves seats because there's a couple who are you know arguing and she doesn't want to be as close to that as possible and so she moves and uh, sits across from <clears throat> jesse and you know over the course of the film they start to get to know each other and um they they just spend the day because you know they uh, uh, he has to get back to like, America he uh, is a uh, you know as the as the film goes on he later says how he was in Madrid originally and how uh, he really uh, was was supposed to be with his girlfriend but they broke up and. Like, she didn't really want to be around him, him much anymore and uh, have much to do with him. And so, uh, you know, they broke up and he wants to get away. He gets a Euro pass and goes to uh, Vienna, which is where he can go back home. It's like the cheapest he could get while, of course, having some money. But he, you know, doesn't have enough money to get like a hotel and so what he was just planning to do and did was uh, walk around Vienna and he asks Celine to go with him just to hang out all day and uh, all night before, you know, they had, both have to depart. She's from France, she's in Paris. And so obviously it's like a, like he's like, she can just eat, ride the train back home where you know he can't just write uh, uh, write a train back to you know uh, <clears throat> USA. He has to get onto a plane, and so throughout the course of the film, uh, for all who haven't seen it, because um, I know there are some people who watch the channel and haven't seen every movie that I talk about, either they're new or uh, old, regardless. But, you know, uh, throughout the course of the film, they're walking around, uh, go to like a music uh, store, they go on like a Ferris wheel, or they kiss for the first time, and they just, it, it, it basically, you see two people basically fall in love. And the kind of stuff I talk about, obviously, you know, romantic movies are something I'm all that enthralled with 
uh, for the most part, um, in, like in the sense that it's not something I generally would go and uh, watch typically. Um, Casablanca, of course, is one that I enjoy. It's probably like the, in my opinion, the best uh, romantic movie of all time, uh, at least to me. Um, but this trilogy really does come, I think, uh, like will be my, uh, uh, second for me. Um, uh, the performances by everybody uh, it is really good. Um, of course, Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy are excellent. Um, uh, the direction is really good. And one thing I like is the conversations, the dialogue. It's really good. It's, it sounds like real people. Um, and I know that might sound kind of uh, perhaps obvious to some or kind of like a no duh, but it, you know, it's interesting how writing good dialogue and have it sound realistic. Like these are like real conversations people could have. It is not the easiest thing in the world. And so the, the dialogue, uh, is excellent. Uh, Richard Linklater wrote this with uh, Kim uh, Krasan because <clears throat> he's like he he needed like a a woman to help him write for like the you know the 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 main woman the main female of the film where you know he'd be able to write the you know for the most part the male part uh, fairly easily um and it's interesting how uh, as the time as time goes on you know and there's discussions how to some extent the two of these two sort of kind of improvise things where it's indisputed by uh kim krasan how like what was said for the most part was really just from the script not much was changed uh, outside of maybe certain lines or certain uh things in the moment that when they were there on location oh well this kind of sort of changed a bit to sort of suit uh like the scene would be better with uh, this incorporated like uh For instance, maybe just uh, when they uh, go to a, a specific specific uh, uh, club to drink, uh, maybe that was a place they found that would be better. If, of course, I don't know the I don't have the script, and from the behind the scenes, they don't uh, talk too much regarding. Uh, about certain aspects like that, but I could definitely see how in the moment perhaps something would be better suited for this taking place here rather than like maybe a typical bar or uh, some other place, like maybe like a restaurant. And uh, in that club actually is where you can see uh, uh, Richard Linklater, who is playing foosball. Uh, Richard Linklater, he... Uh, seems to occasionally uh, 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 appears in his own films every so often. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a this is a really good movie. Um, I think this is a film that uh, if you're um, looking to expand, I think uh, this would be a good trilogy to uh, do so. Obviously, this is from the Criterion Collection. I don't know if this is on <clears throat> on a Criterion channel. There, I typically look at stuff that I don't own because I don't exactly need to watch something like a Sit at Nancy, for instance. Um, uh, if I actually own... Uh, like, you know, if I own Sid and Nancy, I don't need uh, to watch it on the Criterion channel. I mean, I guess I could for perhaps convenience, 
but for the most part, I'm pretty fine and happy with uh, just putting the Blu-ray in or DVD or whatever I happen to own. Um, generally, so with this, I don't know if it's uh, on uh, the Criterion Channel. If you have that, it might be on Amazon Prime. I heard some time ago that those three, these three films are. Um, but yeah, I didn't go too in depth with this because, you know, there could be some people who haven't seen these movies. And if so, I think it'd be kind of cool to, uh, watch a film like this, you know, it's a romantic movie, but it isn't like a full on like chick flick, perhaps like that's, I think that's a, th that's a thing that seems to be a big reason as to why you know guys might not typically watch certain like romantic movies because they're primarily for women not there's not necessarily much in the film uh to uh really appease men much you know it's primarily just for women and of course that's completely fine but you know the male audience might not be gravitating towards um uh, certain kind of romantic films. I think this is this trilogy is really good, though. Um, and uh, it's nice how at the end of the film, I guess spoilers, you know, they have to obviously depart, but they make plans to come back to Vienna six months from now, so it would be like June, like June 16th, I believe. So six months, you know, would be December. So it'd be cold, but, you know, they'll uh, be back. They're, they were making plans that <clears throat> in six months they will uh, uh, meet back up and then uh, catch up about what they were doing. It'll also be around Christmas time, so that might be a pretty good <laughs> reason for them to sort of like uh, maybe uh, take some time off. She's in. She's like in school still, whereas it doesn't seem like Jesse, you know, is in school. Selena is, but uh, from the discussions, it doesn't sound like Jesse is at the moment. But, you know, he's just sort of like now just trying to do what he can, travel and get his mind off of his ex-girlfriend. But... Yeah, this is a really good film. I think it's a, it's one that is definitely a, a, it's just very interesting and uh, unique to some extent. Um, Richard Linklater got the idea for this film after he met a woman at a toy store and they kind of just spent the night together when he was in New York. Uh, when his first, like, uh, first film of his was sort of like... Uh, like, a, like, sort of getting some kind of traction. So he was just in town. He didn't have much to do at night. So, you know, he and this woman, whom I will probably talk about later by the final film of this trilogy, but, you know, uh, she was a big influence. And, yeah. It's, it's interesting just how an idea like this... Uh, comes to be you know and now originally it was supposed to be uh, domestic in America but then he decided to make it like have an American and uh, somebody from and a woman from another country uh, in the case you know French you know she's French uh, they just kind of meet and they you know click uh, it's really cool and really fascinating and it's also very <clears throat> done realistically like it, this could happen and uh and who knows this might happen to some people you know they meet somewhere and uh they're not from that place but they just sort of uh headed off after talking and yeah you know might make plans to meet back some time later be it like some months or year or however long it might be and then who knows maybe they'll have a 
pretty lasting relationship, or they might not. Uh, I think it's a, this is a very good film. It's very well done, very well made. Everybody involved does an excellent job with it uh, and in it. Um, yeah, this is a film that I think uh, deserves to be talked about. Um, it's a movie that I don't think underrated would be the best word for it, but I know it isn't talked about as much. Um, it's more like an indie uh, film. You know, it's a very small budget film, and so it's really, uh, uh, it might really he help or appeal to people who are into indie films in particular, not just romantic films. So if you're into indie films, I think this could also help um, in the sense of perhaps uh, getting into it. You know, it's not just a romantic film. It's a very small budget and it's a, uh, it's really well done. Uh, uh, it's really <laughs> all I have to say is before I just start to uh, constantly repeat myself. So I think I should end it there. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, if you've seen this movie, what do you think about it? What do you think about the trilogy as a whole? Um, of course, I guess perhaps you can uh, say that as <laughs> we go along with each film in this uh, trilogy. And, and each sequel was uh, nine years later, which is interesting. Um, it wasn't it, it wasn't it completely planned that way, but it just sort of happened. And uh, clearly it is still a trilogy because um, the last film was in 2013. Last year would have been when uh, this would have had a fourth film, but we don't have one, but might be, uh, maybe that's a good thing, perhaps, you know. Um, wouldn't be a bad thing to have a fourth film, but, you know, apparently everybody just hasn't been able to, perhaps, uh, you know, they haven't had a story where they thought it'd be good for uh, uh, there to be at least one more film. Uh, but, you know, if they ever did uh, come up with an idea, a story, that's quite good. I'd be interested in seeing it. Um, but, yeah, that's just me. Um, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a, you know, I've had an excellent week. You know, it is now August, so new month. And I hope all of you are just well. Please take care and again, have a nice day.